I was wondering first if you could maybe give us an update. Did, did y'all get a clean bill of health yesterday's testing? And do you think everyone that missed the LSU game will, will be back for, for this week? Uh, we anticipate um, having a close to full roster. Um, our testing went well yesterday. And, um, uh, you know, between injuries that we <clears throat> had and, and the COVID, we, we feel like we're going to be pretty close to full speed. Scotty. Yeah, Coach, I was wondering if you had an update on Bo Limmer and Noah Gatlin, if those guys might be able to be back for you this week too. Uh, Bo, I think Bo's uh, doing well. We still are yet to find out on Noah. Um, he uh, is, is getting some tests right now. And, uh, and we'll see if he'll be available or not. But we feel pretty good on, on Bo. Tom. You had two players that get national type award stuff this today. Uh, Grant Morgan's a, a Butkus Award semifinalist. And Traylon Burks got added to the uh, Bolitnikoff um, list. I'm just wondering if you could comment about those two guys and the kind of seasons they've had. Well, obviously, both of them's had good seasons uh, to get on that list. You know, the other thing about that is is winning a little bit helps you, you know, helps you get recognition to get on those lists. So every individual uh, award, in my opinion, comes uh, with a strong background of team involved with it, too. So uh, but they both played well. We've talked about them a lot. They've both done a nice job and. And uh, we're proud of them and happy for them that they that they received that recognition. Bob. Hey, Sam, if, if I remember correctly, you the team was going to get back yesterday and you were going to meet with them. Just wondering if, if you met with them, how, I mean, what was everybody's mindset after getting some, some quality time off? Just kind of how do you feel, feel like the guys are all pretty refreshed and everything? Well, any time that you leave campus, then you have to have a negative COVID test result before you can meet with them. So they, they tested last night, got the, um, the results back this morning. And so um, we did not meet with them uh, last night, but this will be just a, you know, we were able to do some walkthroughs, some meetings last week uh, with the anticipation of play in Missouri. Um, and now we're just going to have a regular week, uh, Monday through, uh, in, pre in preparation for uh, Missouri. Bradley? Hey, Coach. Uh, talk to the commits over the weekend. It looks like most of them are going to sign early. How big a positive is that? And also that, uh, you know, several of them are going to be able to be here in January. Well, I think any time that you have early signing date, uh, and obviously you like who you have or you wouldn't have, accepted their commitment it's big to to get it early it's big to get it in december um, you can once you get them on the dotted line then you can go for well are we going to save some of these for some transfers are we going to uh, continue to chase after another position you know what i mean another guy at the same position uh, we obviously like who we have and and so um, we hope like I'm sure everybody who has commitments, that they will sign uh, on uh, December 16th, I believe it is. Um, I, may, I may be wrong there, but I think it's the 16th, first Wednesday, or the December 16th, I think is when it is. But anyway, um, we're certainly hoping that uh, we can get that class figured out. And then we you know, potentially have several guys coming in in January, and that would be huge for our for spring ball, assuming that uh, we'll be able to have spring ball. Appreciate Nikki. it. Nikki. Coach, you said you expect close to a, a full roster back, but, you know, those guys in quarantine and stuff, how do you expect them to be um, physically with their conditioning? Um, is that a worry factor for you or not very much? Not really. You know, quarantine now is a little bit different than what it was before, Nikki, and that they can get some individualized workouts you know before they they weren't able to do that now they can um so to be honest with you we've been dealing with it all year so 
just a few more now, obviously, but uh, I think we'll be okay. We're going to do business as usual this week. And if I feel like at the end of practice, we haven't had a spirited practice or that we need a little bit more conditioning, we'll get that in early in the week. But I'm certainly not anticipating that. I'm anticipating the guys have, have, have done enough to, to be able to play hard uh, for obviously 60 minutes. Trey Yeah, Coach, seems like every other week there's some kind of underlying storyline with the game, and this one obviously with Barry Odom returning to Columbia. Uh, just curious about – I know you prepare equally for every game, but any any underlying extra meaning for, for Coach and uh, also Sam Carter and, and Brad Davis. And I guess there's probably a benefit in knowing personnel too. Well, I think there's a benefit fit from those guys because they know the personnel. Um, <clears throat> I've also been playing Missouri now for a long time. And uh, so <clears throat> we think we've got a pretty good handle of who they've had, at least in the past. Um, you know, Missouri is our crossover game. So uh, obviously we play them every single year and and they've had the best of us, at least for the fat, pat, past four years. and and. Um, so we're, we're going to try our best, like, like we would each and every game, to try to stop that. But uh, certainly they're playing top-notch football right now, well-coached and physical, and they're going to try to bully us on offense and on defense. They're going to have an exceptional D-line and probably the greatest linebacker, at least one of them in the country, in Bolton. So they uh, certainly are a good football team. They're playing at you know, they're peaking right now at the right time. Have a lot of respect for them. But uh, to be honest with you, they're our crossover rival, and that's a big deal to us. Let me know if you've got more questions in the chat. Hutch. Sam, uh, Grant specifically, I know you touched on him earlier, but, you know, he's not the, the biggest linebacker, the fastest linebacker, but he leads the country and tackles and has done a lot of other good things for you. What, what is it that makes him so good for y'all's defense? Well, he's slippery. You know, he's uh, he slips blocks a lot. Uh, he plays extremely hard. He's, you know, very prepared when he goes into a game. He spends a lot of time in the film room and a lot of time with his coaches getting prepared for the game. Uh, he tries to play the game before it happens. You know, he tries to see uh, his tendencies and things of that nature before it happens. And he's just a very intelligent guy that uh, loves to play. Uh, you know, walked on here. He, Loves to wear the Arkansas across his chest and and it plays extremely hard and that's that's it. He's smart, plays hard, and well prepared. Tom, sorry, Sam. This might be a little repetitive, but you got a chance on Saturday to just watch their game, and so latest impressions of what you think of Missouri and why they seem to be firing on all cylinders right now. Well, I also watched the game film when I got back, too. But, um, well, they're a big physical team. I mean, um, they're not a complicated offense, even though it can be complicated because everything that looks the same is different, you know, uh, whether they, they run a good RPO system. Um, they have exactly what they need. They've got a great back in round tree, a, a really good quarter – back and Baselick and 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 then they've got a great slot so on offense big line guy you can hand it to guy you can throw it to and more and then on defense they've always had really good defensive linemen and, and uh, I think last year where I was when I was at Georgia I think Bolton had about 20 tackles on us last year so Maybe we can cut that down to at least 19 or something. You know, he, he had a great game last year against us over there at Georgia. But um, they just – I think right now they're believing in uh, Coach Drinkwich and what he's getting done. And he's a fine man, fine coach. And they've got a good coaching staff. So I think, you know, they're, they're, they're peaking at the right time just because of their belief and how hard they play. Bob? You know, Sam, we, we talk a lot about your coaches from Mizzou, but I think people may have forgotten 20 years ago, you, you're at Missouri yourself. I know that wasn't a great year for, 
the Tigers, unfortunately. But just wondered what you remember about your time there, and just your your thoughts on the on the program, you know, historically. Good people, a lot of tradition. Um, they've done a lot with their facilities. Uh, you know, Columbia, Missouri is a great place to live. Didn't live there very long, but uh, enjoyed my time. And uh, I was a high school coach in the state of Missouri at Princeton, Missouri and Trenton, Missouri. And, and I would have the opportunity to go down and watch the Tigers play when I was coaching high school ball there. And it was a thrill of mine. And, and being able to coach there was a thrill of mine as well. But uh, certainly um, fond memories of Columbia and the Missouri Tigers when, from the year I was there. All right, let me know if you've got more questions. Nikki? Um, Coach, to start the season, you know, Myron Cunningham's name was being brought up as, you know, potential draft picks. So I've seen his grades go up, but what have you thought about his performance and progress over last season? And, you know, what are your chances of potentially getting him back for another year? Well, I've been really proud of him. He, he's, he's playing better. Um, obviously, I think if we could keep him another year, we could really up his draft stock uh, uh, even even higher. Uh, we'll get the results back from the scouts, and and if it says you need to go to the NFL, then that's what we'd encourage him to do. If it says go back to school, then we would certainly encourage that. I don't know right now what he'd like to do, but I know he has – improved his draft uh, stock this year. And a lot of it is because of his size too. He's gotten much bigger and can handle bull rushes better and things of that nature. But I believe he's gotten better. I believe if he came back, he'd get a lot better. And, and uh, if, he, if he gets a draftable grade, then we'll certainly wish him well on the way out the door. Bob? Sam, Roundtree, I think he set Mizzou's record for rushing yards by a running back. I think one of their quarterbacks from a while back has uh, the record. But what, what do you think about him? He seems like a, like a pretty physical back. He is. I mean, I think if you look at Roundtree, I think the number one thing, first thing you think about is how hard he runs and how many tackles he breaks. Um, I think they're pretty much locked in with their O-line and him. I mean – they're a physical offensive line. They like to play through the whistle, and he's the same way. I, th I think they really complement each other, his old line and him, but he's really having a good season, and, and I have a lot of respect for the way that he plays the game. Tom? We've talked in general about the guys you've got coming back, but on the defensive line specifically, how important is it? Do you feel like most of them will be back, and in retrospect, uh, how big of a performance was that from Jonathan Nichols, all the snaps he got? Uh, Jonathan Marshall, how many snaps he got uh, in the last game? Well, if you'd ask him, I think he wished he didn't play as quite as many snaps. But he doesn't complain. He doesn't say much. He just goes out there and plays hard. But uh, obviously, you know, I think maybe our – besides Jonathan, maybe our top five or six D linemen – weren't able to play, and and uh, we think we're going to be able to get them all back. Assuming, you know, we have two more tests, but assuming all that goes well. And I think that's big. You know, obviously we need more size on the field and things of that nature. And the guys who got to play are going to be better players uh, when, they're, when their number's called again. Hey, Biddy. Yeah, Coach, uh, how did the bye week go when you guys found out, I guess, a week ago? Did you guys treat it like a, a regular bye week, get some work for young people? I don't even know how many players you had available. Well, we didn't, Trey. Uh, you know, I, and I'm probably in the minority here, but I believe if you don't have enough to play, you probably don't have enough to practice. And and uh, we didn't have enough to play. Now, we could have – we could have – put a couple scrimmage together or something of that nature. We just thought at that point it was going to be uh, much better to use it mentally and physically trying to get healthy. And so ours were all walkthroughs uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday along with uh, tape. Nikki. Coach, along, along the same lines of my other question, Rakeem Boyd, you know, he came back 
hoping to improve his stock further and he had to miss a couple games and, and, and just overall just not um, as, as good of a stat season for him as last year. Have you had conversations with him? It must, you know, be tough on him to have, um, you know, some disappointments this season when he was hoping to have a really big one. Well, there's still three games left, you know, and so he can, he can certainly uh, improve uh, his numbers in the next three games if he goes out and plays well and they block well for him. Um, I'm, sh I'm sure it's not ideal for him. We talk to him, uh, him and all the other guys quite often, and, and uh, you know, he knows that, that he can do something about that as well himself. And, and we can certainly block better for him and do some things of that nature. But sometimes as a back, you just have to – at times you have to go make your own way. And uh, he's he was getting better at that. You know, had a pretty good game against A&M and, and uh, certainly, you know, obviously couldn't play against LSU. But we, we anticipate he'll be back and healthy and ready to roll. Two more. Bob. Sam, you mentioned Eli Drinkwitz. I was wondering how, how well you know each other. And he's, he's obviously a, an Arkansas native. Just wondering what, what you know about him and, and do you guys know each other very well personally, had much interaction? I'm getting to know him uh, better. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him. And um, uh, we text back and forth uh, at different times. Um, uh, I think he, he made public that he texted me at 11.45 last Monday night. Uh, which he did uh, whenever <laughs> we had to cancel and they got a new one. He just wanted to make sure that, that I was up since he, he had to be. And uh, I thought it was funny. And, but, you know, I have a lot of respect for him. I didn't know him until, um, you know, obviously this year. And, and uh, being head coaches, we, we get a chance to talk to a lot of head coaches during the season. And, and he's one that I've, certainly taken a, a liking to and, and a friendship with. Last one, Hutch. Sam, I noticed <clears throat> that you mentioned three games left. I guess that includes a bowl game. Do you feel confident that y'all have, have done enough to, to earn a spot in a bowl? Oh, yeah. I mean, we won three SEC games. Uh, any, I think any time you win three SEC games and you're scheduled right, uh, in the preseason, that's equals anywhere from six to seven, and absolutely, and uh, and I think we will. I think we deserve it. <laughs>